A brisk flight to the air tonight in Hayward, California on the first night of fall as the Oakland Roots host Monterey Bay FC in the Battle of the Bay presented by Anthem Blue Cross. Happy to have you with us tonight alongside MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Joe Malva. And Ricky, it doesn't get bigger than this tonight. Two rivals going at it in seventh and eighth respectively right up against that playoff line. And if you're a player, these are the games that you want to play. And talking to Frank Galpin, talking to Noel Delgado, how important this game is going to be very interesting because the Oakland Roots coming off a loss against Tulsa and Monterey Bay, a loss against San Diego. So this three points up for grabs is going to be massive. And it's not just coming off one loss for the Roots. It's coming off four straight losses. They've been in each of these games, but losses nonetheless. And we asked Noel Delgado about it. He said, look, we've actually been playing very well, but we haven't been clinical in both boxes, offensively and defensively. They had a good chat this week. Press the reset button. So again, at home against a very good Monterey base side, I think that midfield battle is going to be really important for the Roots here tonight. And they don't usually have Johnny Rodriguez and Anwar Pelaez both on the field. That changes tonight with an attacking-minded lineup. So Anwar Pelaez is your UCSF health player to watch. I think he needs to be very good for the Oakland Roots. He needs to stay high, but also have the ability just to spin into that hole and stretch the opposition. But the question mark for the Oakland Roots and Noah Zagato, how clinical can he be in that attacking 18 yard Bucks, and what does the service look like into him today? They need him tonight to pick up three points, and they need him these next few games because it doesn't get any easier from here on out in this run-in for the Oakland Roots. All teams either above the playoff line or El Paso lurking just beneath them in ninth. Playoffs right around the corner. You want to test yourself against the best size. No better than the reigning champions at Orange County, at San Diego, and then you welcome El Paso. It's going to be very interesting, but it all starts tonight at home for the Oakland Roots. And for Oakland and Monterey Bay here battling with each other, tied on 40 points each, Oakland has the leg up because they have an extra game at their disposal. Monterey Bay, same thing. It's all difficult the rest of the way. And again, Frank Yalf, you just lost against San Diego. So what does that reaction look like? You're going against them at their house on the 30th. So again, not a very easy schedule for Monterey Bay as players are approaching very quickly. And that's why the three on the line tonight are so important for both these teams. Difficult roads ahead to finish the season. And this team has been changed completely ever since Rafael Baca joined the mix. He just gives them a sense of security. When to go, when to stay. He sits right in front of this back forward. The ability just to join the attack as he sees fit for Frank Yop, how quickly can he get in a rhythm and dictate tempo away from home is going to be key for the visitors here tonight. Budding rivalry here in USL Championship in the second year of existence for Monterey Bay FC. They took the first ever meeting against the Oakland Roots here in Oakland. The next two went Oakland's way. They won back-to-back -back battles of the Bay. Can they make it three? It's the Oakland Roots and Monterey Bay coming up next. It doesn't matter how hard you play, practice, or compete, as long as you do it together. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up and took on food insecurity. Empowered all athletes to improve physical health and expanded health and wellness resources available to the residents of Oakland and the Bay Area. We're committed to continuing our work to improve the lives and health of our community together. Visit oaklandroots.com anthem to learn more. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood, sweat, and tears. In knowing that you left it all on the floor and never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, brewed for fans with a fighting spirit. How can someone so cute be so complicated. Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. Their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals.
morning lineups tonight brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. And for Noah Delgado, the 11 looks like this. And you mentioned it earlier, Joe. You have John Rodriguez and you have Anwar Palais on that front line. So what does that relationship look like? I, I think Anwar Palais is going to stay higher. So you're going to see John Rodriguez come in and be that link from that midfield line to that front line. Trayvon Reed, he needs to be very good at picking and choosing when he comes interior, but also when to provide the width. But so, so, Donaciano. One goes, one stays. That midfield duo needs to be very good at home for Noah Delgado. Monterey Bay starts the same 11 they started last week in the win over Vegas, but they went down 2-0 in that first half. And again, you talk about fluidity on the front line for Monterey Bay. Okole, he's going to be a target man, so you're going to see off the ball running from Guido and Alex Dixon. It all comes out to Baca and Murphy. Murphy's going to go on and join the attack a little bit more. Baca's going to sit right in front of that back four. Marty Doner and Wilmar Martinez are going to pick and choose when they provide the width, but also what to create overloads on the front line for that man, Frank Gallup. J.C. Griggs in the yellow, the man in charge with a whistle in hand. Oakland in the black from right to left. Monterey Bay in the white from left to right. Seventh place, Oakland. Eighth place, Monterey Bay. Three weeks away from decision day. And we're underway in Hayward, California. Happy to have you with us this evening alongside Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Joe Malfa. Green, former member of the Oakland Roots, went from Oakland to Monterey Bay. Now back again to face his former club. Trayvon Reed, interesting addition to the starting 11 today. Looking for Palais, but a heavy touch. Reed's a player, you and I were chatting about Ricky, where sometimes his level is very, very high, and you see the potential why the Jamaican senior national team was giving him looks, why he played for the youth national teams. And then there's other days where it feels like he switched off, his touch isn't crisp, he has some issues coughing the ball up, but you sort of give and take with a player like that when you're looking to generate goals as a team who struggled to do so recently. I think you're just looking for consistency from Trayvon Reed in terms of getting into that final third, having that end product, because you know the talent is there. So you're looking for a bit more productivity as well. Two goals and one assist on the season. He gets into very good spots, but so many times it just wants you begging for a little bit more quality, because you know he has it. So his relationship between him, Palais, and Rodriguez needs to be very good at unbalancing this back line of Monterey Bay here tonight. Walmer Martinez battling against Ryan Tamacas. Both El Salvador national teamers. It'll be an interesting battle to watch all evening long. These teams sort of mirror each other with the wingback setup. And Oakland has had a lot of success playing against teams that utilize wingbacks this year. Getting in behind, exploiting them. And that's how Monterey Bay conceded their two goals against Vegas last week. It was trouble in behind Walmer Martinez down that right flank. And I do think when you have two wing backs, two teams that use wing backs, who can pin back the opposing wing backs to make that line of five, to create that little bit of opening between lines and create overload centrally. So I do think if you're Memo Diaz, you're going to ask a lot of questions here of Maury Doner and Walmer Martinez and Tamakas on the far side. So something to keep an eye on. Watch out here. Comes through for Galito. Has somebody running across with him. It's Dixon! What a start for Monterey Bay on the road! Alex Dixon, a dozen goals on his season! Talking to Frank Gallup, yes, you want to play direct, but what does the movement off of Ugo Okoli look like? It was always going to come down to Sam Guido and Alex Dixon just to test the shape of the Oka Roos, but give credit to Sam Guido because the timing, the unselfishness, puts his ball into the path of Alex Dixon. As he draws in Emmer Clementa, you tell your special player, Alex Dixon, your leading goal scorer, go out and make a difference. Clinical finish, hard and low to that far post. A dream start on the road here for Monterey Bay. Four straight losses for the Oakland Roots. This is not the way you wanted to start on your home turf against your rival. 
It was all fine and dandy before these last four games, to be fair for the Roots. The previous eight games before this losing streak, they had five wins, two draws, one loss. Out of nowhere, everything just sort of went away offensively. The hole started to open up defensively. You even lose 3-1 to the last place. Las Vegas lights in this stretch. And this is not the start that you needed. But it's also defending 101, Joe, because you look at this back three for the Yoko Roots. As Neville Hackshaw goes up to challenge that initial ball over the top of your Emmer Clemenza and Danny Barbier, you have to have the ability just to tuck in and provide that little bit of security. Far too easy for Monterey Bay to score the opening goal here for the Roots. Two teams in opposite form. Yes, Monterey Bay is coming off that last second loss against San Diego in the midweek. That snapped a four game winning streak. In the live table, this moves Monterey Bay ahead of Oakland by three points. We'll take a look at tonight's injury report brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Jojo Nane, the lone name for Oakland. A few names on that list for Monterey Bay. Might not make it back this season as well. Jojo Nane, they hope to have back in short order the Oakland Roots. Another game that we'll keep you updated on as the evening goes along. And it's a half an hour ahead of ours. So we'll have some sort of idea what the table looks like at the end of the night. We will be the last show in town tonight in USL Championship, and that game is El Paso Phoenix, because coming into the night, it was Oakland 7, Monterey Bay 8, El Paso 9, with Oakland and Monterey Bay on 40 each, and El Paso on 39 points. Oakland, El Paso have only played 30, Monterey Bay, this will be 31. So Oakland and El Paso do have the game in hand on Monterey Bay, but right now, it's Monterey Bay up to seventh, Oakland, El Paso, sitting on 40 each at that line. And need we remind you, as we showed top of the broadcast, the upcoming schedule, decision day, Oakland hosting El Paso. So very well could be eight versus nine and a play-in game, essentially, to get to the playoffs. But still a long way to go. Something to keep an eye on as the night goes along. That other game in action, again, El Paso and Phoenix scoreless through 35 minutes. Colorado Springs began the night as the third team of the bunch on 40 points with Oakland and Monterey Bay. They pulled off a 2-0 win at home against Sacramento to get them up to 43. Sacramento all of a sudden is in a little bit of a dip in form. San Antonio had been in a dip in form, only four points picked up in their last five games, but a 4-0 win coming tonight against Orange County. Or sorry, a 4-0 lead, I should say. There are still 15 minutes left, so perhaps they can add to it. Talk about making a statement. 1-0 against Orange County, who over the last couple months cannot put their foot wrong. Juan Marcita and company hitting the right form. Those playoffs are just right around the corner, as we keep on mentioning. And that's the team Oakland sees next, which makes this game all the more important because it's that now seemingly back on track San Antonio team. A try from distance here. Blanchett diving and making the stop. Surprised by the quick strike. Keeps it out, and otherwise it'd be a world of trouble down two. I had the ability to chat with Frank Yallo, and I asked him about the attacking trio. Will he change anything? And he said, no, I don't think I will, because you look at this game against San Diego, where one miss on the back end of it, Adrian Rebelar should probably do better with the chance that he had to clear that game out to be five wins on the road for Monterey Bay. That was a very good dynamic in terms of Ugo Coley, Sam Gledel, Alex Dixon playing off of one another and have just picked up right where they left off here eight minutes in. But I do think if you're Noel Delgado and the Oakland Roots, Donaciano and Matsoso have to have, to be, have to have a bit of a better relationship as one each provides that little bit of security in front of that back line. Because too many times that half spaces are getting won by Monterey Bay here today. didn't look right. Diaz trying to play it across. It hits Hackshaw and ricochets to Blanchett. Cut back to the 
basics this week, according to Noah Delgado. She's cleaning up some things defensively, but as you mentioned on the goal, that was basic defending, and that's maybe what the scary part is right now for Oakland. They spent a week getting back to the basics, and three minutes in, you're done in because you messed up the basics. It's very interesting now for the Roots. Just what does your reaction look like? Because so many times when you're on a losing streak like they are, you concede early at home, you can just hang your head and say, here we go again. But now you now need to show a bit of character, especially so deep into the season. Get yourself on the ball just a tiny bit more. Get the confidence within the side because there is going to be success to be had, like you mentioned, Joe, behind those wing backs of Monterey Bay. Danny Barbier. Here's Johnny Rodriguez with 11 goals on his season. Would love to make it 12 the same way Alex Dixon just did. Shout for a penalty here. J.C. Griggs was right on top of it. And it'll be a throw for the Oakland Roots. You start on one side, you end on the other. All about the relationship between Brian Tamakas and Johnny Rodriguez on this near side. I think it would have been very harsh to point to the spot there from J.C. Griggs. But Elias just gets there a tad late. You see they're clear. Walmart Martinez gets the initial play on the ball. Belize trying to create space. It's Diaz. End line for Tamakas and out for a goal kick. Defending home turf has been a bit of an issue this year for Oakland. You go back to their inaugural season two years ago. They were 7-5 and 4 at home at Laney. Last year, 7-5 and 5 at home at Laney. This year, the home field shifts to Pioneer Stadium here in Hayward and it's been a dip to four, five, and five. Haven't been as good at home. The fan support is the same. Whether it's just, I don't know, the field surface a little bit different. Not quite as comfortable from the place you were. Ongoing search for a permanent stadium. Great news on that front this week. That they publicized. Have the space, have the lot next to the Oakland A's Coliseum. Where they could have a 10,000 seat stadium on the way for 2025. And the announcement was put out earlier this year that they will still be here at Pioneer Stadium for 2024. But a new permanent home coming perhaps in 2025. Just a dip in form at home this year. And that has been an issue. They're 7, 6, and 2 on the road. They picked up their most points. But Delgado hasn't quite put his finger on what the issue has been at home this year. Only thing he could sort of point to was that last year, if you remember in the run-in for Oakland, they had a lot of big results on the road and had the big road playoff win against San Diego. So that gave them this air of confidence when they go on the road, a swagger, and they've taken it with them on the road this year. But the flip side, their home form has dipped to a little bit of an alarming number. Always talk about picking up results on the road, even if they're draws and win your home games, and that should take care of business, whether it's a World Cup qualifying stint or a attempt to qualify for the postseason in a league. That's always the cliche. Picked up an extra win or two even at home. We're not talking a drastic shift, just be, I don't know, 6-4-3 and three at home instead of 4-5-5. Five, and five. It's a team that's maybe top 3-4 in the Western Conference. I do think you, if you asked Noah Delgado about that, he'd be the first to tell you. It's like, look, we've been in every single game, especially at home, but it's just been managing moments or lack thereof. That's really done us in and put us into this playoff fight deep into the playoff picture. But I do think for the Oakland Roots, how do you get back to the basics? And it, it was really interesting because he mentioned, we go back to the basics, we press the reset bot button. So now how do you implement that on game day when you walk across that white line? You can see it early, probably not ideal, but after that, you really settled into this game. But I do want to see just a tiny bit more of Johnny Rodriguez and Anwar Perlis and that relationship on the front line. So, so back for Clementa. Worry the captain's armband in the absence of Jojo Nane. Here's Barbier. On the other side, if you look at Monterey Bay, been very good when they're on the road. Six wins, six losses, and four draws. One in the midfield. By Denaciano. But so so. Ricochets favorably to Denaciano. 
Now Trayvon Reed. Reed tried to send it in. Shout for a handball. It is, and it's inside the box. Penalty for the Roots, or is it? Wow, J.C. Griggs says it's just outside the 18. Is he right? We'll take a look in just a moment. You be the judge. Watch the left arm here. The defending. Alex Lart, he's outside the box. The right foot, he's outside. How close can you be? This will probably give you the best That's angle the best right look. here. Maury Dolner just outside. JC Griggs got it right. No benefit of VAR. So whatever call he made was the call, and he got it right. It's so close. If you're in the Oakland Roots, team of inches, JC Riggs, like you said, Joe, that's that spot on and a very dangerous set piece here for Memo Diaz. You know, Delgado, you're, you're barking at Memo just to whip this ball in towards that far post. Diaz goes back post instead, and it's headed away by Kai Green. Akshaw stepping to it, Clementa trapping it. Rafael Baca clearing it. A run coming from Gleedle through the middle. Support run for Coley. Donor. Gleedle weaves his way through. Denasiano draws the contact. And free kick coming out for Oakland. Just how vertical this front line for Monterey Bay can be. Alex Dixon, same Gleedle underneath Ugo Okoli, but you have to give credit to Donaciano, like for like, with the Monterey Bay player, draws the foul, and that's the movement that you want defensively for your two center midfielders, just to drop down and double down and help out this back line of three. Great ball. Reed. The ultimate flexibility with a drinks and seats three pack. Each one includes three any game ticket vouchers. Valid for 2023 regular season home matches. In addition, each voucher includes two complimentary drinks, either beer or soft drinks, available on game day. For more information, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Beer gets it to Masoso. Stump the flank for Ryan Tamakas. Cut back for Rodriguez. Floated along to the back post for Reed. Mori Donner barely got a piece of it. Now it's Memo Diaz cutting one in. It's been Oakland on the front foot controlling the possession. Bay a perfectly executed counter strike in the third minute to the Alex Dixon goal. Reed. Or Beer switches looking for Tamakas cut off by Walmer Martinez. And Edda just boots it. It's interesting, the two goalkeepers have basically split time this year for Monterey Bay. And it's literally been right down the middle coming into tonight through 30 matches. 15 starts for Herrera, 15 starts for Siaha. Take it even a step further, they've both faced in those 15 games each, 72 shots each. Slight statistical advantage goes to Siaha in terms of save percentage and goals against the average, but and hit out the guy right now. Sent long for Trayvon Reed. And hit thought about coming off his line. Reed kept it going, now goes down.
Akshaw a little nonchalant with it. Akoli harassing. Beer to Diaz. And Graciano fouled. No question about that one. A little apology from James Murphy as he works his way back up the field. Murphy, the engine of that midfield. Two years running for Monterey Bay. Led the team in assists, chances created, and tackles last season. Statistically, it's been a bit of a dip this year. Only two assists, but still, when it comes to tackles, when it comes to everything he does, the dirty work, it's all about Murphy. El Paso Phoenix made it to the half, nil-nil. Still, San Antonio four, Orange County nil. Lies taken away by Lara. Just been a bit too direct for the Oakland Roots. Too many times trying to hit that home run ball and do too much. Too fast. I do think if you're an old God of the message to the boys 20 minutes in, just have the ball circulation. Get on the ball just a tiny bit more and make this Monterey Bay side shift from left to right. And that's when the gaps can open up. You play direct, you play into the hands because you just see the physical attributes on the back line for Frank Yalp, Alex Yalp, Lara, I Green, Hugh Roberts, very, watch out, very good on the air. So yes, if you play into Anwar Palais, two things need to happen. He needs to win that initial ball or secondary. There needs to be secondary movements to pick up the ball underneath your target man. Shaw looking long. It seems like they're just lobbing it up there, going Route 1 open. It's very uncharacteristic of them. Especially you look at Monterey Bay, the way that they play with win backs as well. So I do think if you can play into Napo Matoso and Cozy Donaciano, and they can just turn their individual marker, there's going to be real estate operating, right? So if you play direct, it really just congests the side and it makes that second ball battle just that much important. A quick ball movement between the lines. Breaking that initial pressure is going to be key for the Oakland Roots. Nicole is centering. <laughs> and maybe that's not what you want from Clementa. <laughs> letting it go through his legs, screening Paul Blanchett, but they knew they had nobody behind him. Those two have an interesting relationship back there. They've been Really, that center back goalkeeper partnership for the better part of three years now. Fighting like an old married couple at times. You'll see them barking at each other. <laughs> They're the first to congratulate each other on a play well made. Here's Dixon darting at that back line, looking through for Gleadal, and it curls wide. Didn't catch it cleanly with his left foot. But those are the pocket of space that you want to get Memo Diaz in be on beyond this initial pressure of Monterey Bay. But if you do not find your intended target, you leave yourself extremely vulnerable going back the other way. Sam Guido just doesn't get his hips around it or his foot around the ball. So two things. Good idea from Nabil Hackshaw, but you have to execute it because you just see how explosive Monterey Bay is. So, knocked off the ball cleanly. Murphy. Intercepted by Melo Diaz. Diaz tries to go outside the boot and send Reed. Much too much on the pass. No 
Delgado said the lineup would be a bit more attacking oriented tonight. Said they wanted to try and take some more chances and get in behind the wingbacks. That's it quite played out that way through now nearly 25 minutes because Oakland has yet to register a shot. Four shots, two on target for Monterey Bay. No shots yet for the Oakland Roots. Well, they do have 65% of the possession. They haven't done anything with it. It's a perfect picture at your screen right now, man for man, especially that center part of the field. So you know moments like this for Emmer Clemenza just to make one of those players step off their line and open up a gap on the back end or on the front line, some needs to pop off and play in those half spaces. It's just to create a little bit of confusion between lines for Monterey Bay. One of the center backs step off or one of the center midfielders drop off. And neither, neither of those things for the Oakland are happening at the moment. Driven in from out wide, settled by Rodriguez, laid off for Masoso, now through for Donaciano. And that's maybe the big change in terms of helping the attack tonight. You could have gone, if you know Delgado, with Danny Gomez sitting in as the six, or with Tariq Marat, but going with Donaciano will make so many more runs out of the midfield. That's where the extra attacking component comes for the roots. It just gives you a different dynamic. Both sides in the ball, box to box midfielder, while this man on the ball, Napa Matoso, more of a stay at home, number six type of player. We talked about it as well, very interesting as Trayvon Reed gets to nod over Cedeno, a player that is more of a link up player, like to give the players to John Rodriguez and Anwar Palais the service that they deserve. So I do think it's a big opportunity for Trayvon Reed just to showcase to his coach that he deserves to have that trust in being in games such as this. Belize looking for Rodriguez. Again, a combo we haven't really seen much this year. They're very rarely on the field together. Belize and Rodriguez usually a like for like change regardless of whoever starts. The other one's coming in. Now it's back for Rodriguez who goes down. And no call from J.C. Griggs. Corner on the way. How good is this ball from Tamakis? An even better run for Bembo Diaz, slashing across his back line. I do think John Rodriguez is looking for that. Steps right in front of Murphy, and Murphy gets a play on the ball right before Rodriguez. I'll tell you what, 28 minutes in, JC Griggs has been very, very good. That looked very reminiscent to switch sports of the NBA play coming through the lane. You just stop waiting for the contact. Chris Paul, <laughs> Damian Lillard made that famous. Now from the corner, he's all the way through for Reed. Trayvon Reed through the traffic. Hackshaw, his service out for Reed. Reed, the switch, the touch, the hit, the stop from Carlos Herrera. Just change the point of attack, but Memo Diaz just has the license to roam. As he sees Fig, great first touch, just takes out Martinez out of the game. And elects to go for the outside of his foot, the bending ball straight at Herrera. Easy save for the goalkeeper, Monterey Bay. Baca. Doner through for Gleedle. Continues his run, Maury Doner. It's tough to get past Emil Hackshaw, who sends him into the ad board for good measure. And he's going to need a moment to rethink his life choices, trying to sprint <laughs> around Emil Hackshaw in that manner. He's OK. If I were running at Emil Hackshaw, I'd probably just run the other way. You just don't run at him. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Just so strong. I think he's been a terrific addition to the Oakland Roots side. Temper 
temperature down in the low 60s here tonight. Ball is certainly in the air as we tick toward the half hour mark. Happy to have you with us this evening. Alongside MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa. Goal came three minutes in. A stunning goal right out of the gates from Alex Dixon. Brilliantly worked counterattack. Came in alone and stunned this crowd into a brief silence, but to the Roots fans' credit, they started banging the drum within seconds after they figured out what had just happened to them. Chest of Murphy, works it back out to Gleadle. Five goals, five assists coming into this one for Gleadle. Made it a sixth assist. And the 12th goal of the year for Dixon. Sneakily a driving force out of the midfield in their attack, Gleadle. Easy to lose sight of him. This one played over the top for Anwar Pelais, and he drives it wide. That far side, Fernando Gata has a very good connection between Palais and Bright Damakas. But you have to give credit, like for like for Kai Green. Needs to be at the right time to deny a clean shot from Enwar Palais. But those are the runs that you want your number nine to make. Just a spin into the channel off the shoulder of that cent center center back. Just so tenacious, hard runner. Ruthless inside that 18-yard box. You need to get him a bit more service if you're the Oaken Roots. Emma Clementa for Brian Tamakas. And back for Clementa again. Starting to find some more avenues through the Roots. Nearly 70% of the possession. Lidl out ahead. Foot race here. Blanchett wins it ahead of a Coley, just barely. It's the second time you try to play the ball centrally. You force a turnover. An emergency defending on the backside for the Oakland Roots. So picking and choosing how clean can you be and decisive. Building out of the back needs to be a bit better for Nelo Delgado. On the other side of your Frank Yap, yeah, they're just playing into your hands. Try to force turnovers, be explosive because you know there's going to be gaps going back the other way. You're just asking Okoli, Lidl, and Alex Dixon just to stay high and always bait on those half chances. The telegraph pass by Masoso, well read in the middle by Baca, who seemed to incidentally have his arm stepped on after he whipped around. Now Reed, while Baca's still down. Arbeer let it through. Rodriguez tried to slip in Pelais. Baca back to his feet now. It's interesting to see Blanchett come all the way across to make that quick throw in. He wanted to keep the tempo up. It's in Oakland's favor right now. Tempo this game is being played at. Free kick coming for the Roots. We see the first part of the match as well. Baca comes in clumsily on Rodriguez. Seems like it'll just be a talking to. Liga MX, he's veteran. Had a decade spent with Cruz Azul before he joined in July here at Monterey Bay. Previous ties to Frank Yala played for Frank Gallup in San Jose for two years. Won a supporter shield in MLS with him back in 2012. Had a town hall meeting for what was seemingly a pretty thing you got to do here on this free kick. There's really no decision <laughs> for who's going to strike it. I wouldn't think from this distance. 
Unless Roberto Carlos is walking into that locker room, but. Hey, we've seen Emmerich Clemente have some <laughs> bullets from distance, to be fair. It seemed pretty evident that this would just be a Memo Diaz <laughs> service one way or the other. And that's what we land on. As they have something up their sleeve that they've been cooking up off the training ground. Diaz looking for Hackshaw. And we had that meeting for that. Trickling toward the end line. Now for a throw. Diaz. Really unusual how often Oka is playing direct in this one. At least uncharacteristic for them, I should say. This early in a the game, there have been times late in games where they've switched to a four back, they've sent the extra guy up, they've played direct. But to be this early in a game, yes, you're down a goal. Still so much time remaining to be straying through your identity to this degree. Really interesting. Don't know if that's such a tactical game plan from Nel Delgado. But I don't think it's a coincidence because we don't see Cedeno so many times. He's that link up player that likes to play in that half pocket. Him and Lindo Mefeka on a red card. We don't see him today. So who is always going to be that connector from that midfield line to that front line for the Oakleys? Because we talked about, yes, you want to be attack minded. But you need to get your attacking players on the ball in the service in the areas that they want. So John Rodriguez, yes. Damakas looking through. John Rodriguez, yes, he's a player that can drop down, but 11 goals, one assist on the season. You want him to get and operate in higher positions. And I do think if you're Noel Delgado, you have to be talking to whether it's this man on the ball, Trayvon Reed or Rodriguez, just to drop in a tiny bit more because there's just no connective, connectiveness between that midfield line and the attacking players for the open roots at the moment. And by result, that's why you see them playing Route 1 football at the moment. I get the words right out of my mouth as far as pointing out Mafeka's red card suspension as well. Usually it's Cedeno on the right, Mafeka on the left. And all feeding into either Palais or Rodriguez. You're missing both of them in this game. The one by choice. It was the decision to start Cedeno on the bench and start Trayvon Reed, of course. But Mafeka missing with the red card. Siano falls for Masoso. Napo Masoso lost when Palais settles. Rodriguez looking for it. Palais, Reed, Trayvon Reed service back post. Only as far as Asiano. Diaz tried to feed Reed. Rodriguez back to goal, dispossessed. Now Gleadel wants to break. Murphy, Baca. This is where he's dangerous, coming out of the midfield, pulling the strings. Baca, Dolner bumped by Reed. And one cleanly in the eyes of the officials. Wide of Clementa, but he did his best to hold on to it. Clementa looked like he put an awkward foot in, though, there. He's hobbling for a moment as he jogs his way back up the field. Second half has just begun in El Paso, hosting Phoenix, still scoreless. As it stands, El Paso and Oakland would both be on 40. Oakland in eighth, El Paso in ninth, and Monterey Bay with their current lead. 43 and clear of the roots. The beginning of the night, it was Oakland 7, Monterey Bay 8, El Paso 9. Paso is still 9, but Monterey Bay and Oakland have flipped. And that may yet change over the course of this game. I think the standout result of the night, now that it's officially gone final, is San Antonio just beating up on Orange County. It's a San Antonio team that I didn't pick up a victory since August 16th. They went draw, 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 
lost, draw, lost, draw in the stretch since then before the win tonight against Orange County. And Coley went down awkwardly here. They waved for the trainer to come on for a head injury. Then he sprung right back up. And got in the face of Hackshaw. Had to be separated by Blanchett coming in. And J.C. Greek's temper's flaring here in the Battle of the Bay, the two local rivals. Fuller heads prevailing. Sort of. <laughs> still coming down to Coley. Hackshaw still jawing back at him. Two physical players. To what it's a very hard challenge from Nabil Hackshaw, but his eyes are on the ball. Don't think there's any ill will, just the angle that he comes into and catches Ugo Coley coming through him. He does not take it nicely. Matchup is going to be very interesting for the remainder of this game. Two players that are very physical, very strong individuals. Like to throw their bodies around and never want to shy away from any sort of contact. I do think as a center back, you make you try to make a play on this ball. And you wipe out anyone that's in in your path, teammate or not. Hugo Coley just falls a bit awkwardly. As two semi trucks colliding, they're <laughs> both listed at 6'1. Coley listed at 195. Hackshaw listed at 210. But now it's going to be very interesting just to manage moments, right? Because you have the emotions to get one back. If you Hugo Coley. Your football do the talking, the same thing for Neville Hackshaw now. So something to keep an eye on. It's going to be very interesting for JC Griggs, just how he launches that nice little battle between these two players. Back to what we had started before that collision. San Antonio getting back on track with emphasis on a surging Orange County team. But during San Antonio's seven match streak without a victory, closed a lot of ground and nearly got into a position where they could have overtaken San Antonio for second. San Antonio slamming the door shut on that, it seems like tonight. And those are the moments that we were just talking about. Trayvon Reed gets in such good pocket to space. But it's always that little bit of technical ability, that little bit of decision making that's lacking, that leaves you a bit frustrating and begging for more. Tamakis makes a brilliant run in. It has to be one touch out of your body into the path of Ryan Tamakis. But as you take that secondary touch, it slows things down. And in this moment, goes to the wayside. The diagonal has Tamakas where he wants him. Brian Tamakas locked. Marciano Enriquez served in by Tamakas on the ground. Barbier! What a moment for Danny Barbier, the most consistent center back on the team. At the other end, nets a goal, and we're level. The freedom that Noel Delgado lets his outside backs and his wing backs play with. Memo Diaz provides it with, so that gives Danny Barbier the ability just to join the attack as he sees fit. Gets himself in a very dangerous area. Shot from Brian Tamakis gets deflected. But talk about the composure from Danny Barbier. Collects himself, draws out Herrera. Simple finish. Side netting off to the corner to celebrate. Danny Barbier draws this thing even to get with this second goal on the season. Game on here in Oakland. Unbelievable moment for Danny Barbier. 
He's only missed two minutes this season. And we joked with Noah Delgado recently about that game where they pulled up Barbier for some extra attacking help late on. And he said Barbier never addressed it with him, that that broke his perfect attendance streak this season. But he could <laughs> tell that Barbier wasn't happy, and that just speaks to the competitor he is. Only two minutes missed this year. Only Paul Blanchett has played every minute for the Roots. He's always out there. He's always solid defensively in the air. The outlet pass from the back now gets his second goal of the year and shifts the momentum in Oakland's favor before halftime. Don't forget, he was on that U-17 team with Christian Pulisic and friends, and maybe that's one healer on the training ground with them on the attacking, and here we go again for Pelais, but the offside flag is up. Four minutes of stoppage time tacked on. And we'll remind you here that that goal means a $510 donation to Oakland Parks and Rec Foundation, brought to you by East Bay Community Energy. OPRF provides financial and volunteer resources and advocates for recreation programs and parks in Oakland. for Trayvon Reed. So much of this half has been played at this end of the field. Finally got the goal. Oakland now looking for more. Reed scoops it. Rodriguez is header. It's just over the bar. Exactly where you want Trayvon Reed facing forward and sizing up his individual marker. Does very well. He drives Maury Donor to the end line. This little clip ball to the back post. On one of his players go out and get it. And it's Johnny Rodriguez, who will play in his own right. Always good at freeing himself inside that 18 yard box, but just mistimes his jump. And then Memo Diaz had a bit of confusion who's going to attack this ball. You start to see the confidence growing for the Oakland Roots, having more ideas and more creativity in that final third. You can shop the latest Oakland Roots and Soul merchandise by visiting shop.oaklandrootssc.com. Stay fresh, rep Oakland, and spread love today and all days. If you're not registering a shot, you're just beyond the midway point of this first half. Oakland is starting to roll them up. And now Pelais looking for more. Pelais for Reed. Back through for Anwar. Pelais looking for goal. It's blocked. Up to five shots, two on target now. Oakland. It's counters that you have to be careful of, though. Dixon taken down by Clementa. Seemed to be a dive, and that's what J.C. Griggs saw as well. Rodriguez. Final oh, minute of stoppage time here. Baca wanted to take it quickly, but wasn't on the spot where. J.C. Griggs wanted it from El Paso did just score against Phoenix. So they, in the live table, jump both Monterey Bay and Oakland into seventh. Oakland in eighth and now Monterey Bay. After moments ago, they were in seventh, fall all the way to ninth. That's how it's going to be the next three weeks, culminating in decision day on October 14th and the USL Championship Final on November 12th. will be on ESPN2 that day for that one. Oh, 
Baca looking back, and with that comes the halftime whistle. A lively first half between two rivals here in the Bay Area. It started quickly, Alex Dixon three minutes in, then Danny Barbier equalized in the 44th. Playing at a very high tempo, both of these sides. I do think if you're Frank Gal, you can, there's gonna be success to be had with that man. Alex Dixon, Sam Guido, and Sean O'Coley just trying to catch out in transition moments for Monterey Bay. And for the Oakland Roots, I do think you wanna get on the ball just a tiny bit more and create overloads in central locations. That's gonna be key. So how quickly does Noah got to dip into his bench? I'm gonna be curious to see in this next 45 minutes. 10 combined shots, four on target, end-to-end -end action between the Roots and Monterey Bay FC. It's what we've come to expect when these two teams meet. Last year, just about every game was a thriller. This one is seemingly living right up to that bill. It's Oakland one, Monterey Bay one. The Anthem Halftime Show is coming up in just a moment. Eating a balanced diet and being physically active are two of the most important things you can do to be healthy at any age. Fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins can help control your weight and prevent heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Regular exercise can help boost your mood, digestion, and sleep. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots encourage you to eat right and get active. For additional healthy tips, visit www.oaklandrootssc.com anthem. Wouldn't it be great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based, fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. The mission of Fertile Ground Works is of teach, grow, give. Teach people how to grow food for themselves, grow it, and then give it away to people who need it. We grow about 25,000 pounds of food a year. We also operate something we call the Sustainable School Garden Program. Teachers ask us for help setting up a garden on their own campuses. East Bay Community Energy was nice enough to give us $2,500 that we were able to focus on one of our school gardens, and I am truly grateful. Show brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross, transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. It's time to take a look around at some other results from earlier tonight that impact this Western Conference playoff race. New Mexico United visiting the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, and every team in the West was rooting for the team in the East here, and it was the Riverhounds who prevailed. Two center backs get on the score, short, score sheet, excuse me, versus Joey Farrell. Terrific towering header from a set piece. And you talk about Granado Forbes, you're always going to expect quality service. And the other one, Ordonez, does the same exact thing off to the corner. Celebrate big three points for Bob Lee's side at home, taking down a Western foe. So with three games to go, New Mexico four points back of Oakland and Monterey Bay at that playoff line. But we know the goal of the week will belong to a switchback. The question is, Mario Williams or Jairo Enriquez? My question is, if they spend it, they practice finishing <laughs> with Stephen Hogan, whatever they're drinking in the Colorado Springs, I want some of that tape. Take that out. What a fantastic strike from Williams. And then just stop it. <laughs> like, come on. Are you, are you are Enriquez? That's, that's uh, I'm speechless. Big three points. I don't know. I got no words either. Yeah. Everybody's usually telling me and my family and my friends that I don't shut up enough. I, <laughs> score a goal like that, and you'll get me to shut up and just watch it. So. That was a big three points for Colorado Springs. It brought them up to 43. They're up in sixth place now. So two big results from earlier in the night. And this one's going to be a big result either way. Right now it's Oakland 1, Monterey Bay 1. 45 down, 45 to go. We're back with more from the Bay Area in just a moment.
we all have goals. But let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Little things can make a big difference. To have families access much needed resources, Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up to deliver 2,300 diapers to the East Oakland Collective. By supporting parents and babies, we can improve the health of our communities. Here's to a brighter future and many more random acts of kindness. Learn more at oaklandrootssc.com slash anthem. Welcome back into the end of halftime show. Oakland won, Monterey Bay won. We'll come back to our game in a moment, but first, a broader look around USL Championship with some news and notes. Hard to believe, but we are only 21 days from the end of the regular season. And again, the final on November 12th on ESPN2. On our way there, we've got a golden boot race to decipher. Dequat, Trejo, I think we both lean Trejo? I do. I, yeah. I, I, Albert I agree Dequat's with you in score today, so I do think Danny Trejo is going to be chomping at the bit with the remainder of this game in El Paso just to get that 18th goal on his campaign here. We thought Evan Kimbrough might be able to get into a game late in the season for Sacramento, the 13-year-old, if they had things done in Dustin, but after the loss tonight against Colorado Springs and the win by San Antonio, it's only a one-point gap again at the top, and I don't know if that'll happen, but he was called up to the Mexico U16 youth national team and a bright one to remember for the future, maybe even for the present. Take a look now at some scores from out of town, brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. Now, I know we're focused on the Western Conference here in this one between Monterey Bay and Oakland, but out east, it was a big win for Louisville over Loudon, coming from behind as they try to stay in position for a home playoff game. Really good goals as well for Danny Cruz's side. We talked about it at halftime earlier at halftime. Pittsburgh taking down New Mexico, Charleston beating FC Tulsa. So that eighth spot in the Eastern Conference is going to be very interesting. FC Tulsa, Detroit, and Miami all fighting for that last playoff spot. And right now, 70 minutes in El Paso, up 1-0 on Phoenix. Tomorrow, Indy RTV, San Diego, Las Vegas, Birmingham, Miami, a busy Sunday. And then we get back at it in the midweek. The Colorado Springs, Detroit one is the one to watch. No offense to Hartford, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's top of the table. Hartford's eliminated, but Detroit and Colorado Springs. Those are the two battling in their respective counties right now for positioning. Very, very interesting. It's not an easy place to go into Detroit City. Stephen Hogan, you talked about the goals that they just scored. Hostile environment in their own right, but can they do it at Keyword? Colorado Springs, if they bring with them to Keyword the finishing they had tonight, I don't know if there's a team who can beat the Colorado Springs switchbacks, but you can't always count on the world, even though they've had a penchant for them this season. Had a quick goal from Alex Dixon from Monterey Bay. Had a late goal for Danny Barbier of Oakland. It's 1-1 through 45. Second half coming up from Pioneer Stadium. There's satisfaction in sacrifice. In spilling blood. Sweat. And tears knowing that you left it all on the floor and never threw in the towel. Well, except to clean up the mess. Giving it all for your team is worth every drop. Medela, brewed for fans with a fighting spirit. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults, their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. 
Wouldn't it be great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based, fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. My name is Ed and I live in San Leandro, California. I've always been concerned about being prepared and being on a medical baseline where I have a CPAP machine. I was wondering, will I be able to keep that thing going? I got an email from East Bay Community Energy and they mentioned a rebate about getting an electrical generator. So I went for it. East Bay Community Energy has been great. They're doing a job to help our environment and I think they're really supportive. Tonight's match is presented in part by at the Blue Cross, UCSF, and Modelo. Time for a look at highlights from half number one, brought to you by UCSF. And it started early. Alex Dixon, 12 goals now in the year. Just root one football, but look off the ball running. If you're Nabil Hackshaw and Danny Barbie, a bit of confusion that just goes. Clinical finish, Alex Dixon, but give credit to Sam Guido. He draws in Emmer Clements, and as he draws him in, the right pace, the right ball at the right time. 12 goals on the year for that, man. Big time goal, big time start for Monterey Bay. But the Open Rouge, we talked about the reaction. And that's something that knows the guys going to want to see a bit more, getting more numbers involved in wide areas. You have to be careful with the transition moments because Monterey Bay, they're so explosive on the front line. And eventually, you got the sense goal was going to come for Oakland. They were knocking on that door. Over the last 20 minutes of the first half, they had nine shots, two on target, and this one found the back of the net. Well, when you play with the back three, you expect that back three to stay home, but not with this local root side, not with the fluidity. Memo Diaz, he provides the width, so that allows Danny Barbier the freedom to join the attack. It takes a wicked deflection, but gets the wrong side of Mori Donor. Take nothing away from the finish. Danny Barbier pumping up the crowd. Big time goal right before halftime. Did the crowd need pumping up and they've been <laughs> fully into it all night long it did take it into a higher level there as did oakland as the half wore on it's gonna be very interesting now i do think that midfield battle is going to be so important to impose your identity on the opposition who's going to break that individual marking because there's going to be so much real estate because so much of both, both of these sides play with the same formation right so it's a 1v1 all over the field but i do think that middle part of the ground is going to be very important to see who's going to claim and dictate tempo in this next 45 minutes as it stands to begin the second half. El Paso, seventh place on 42 points in the live table. They're up 1-0 on Phoenix with 15 to go. Oakland, eighth place, 41 points. Monterey Bay, ninth place outside of the playoffs looking in, 41 points. A massive 45 minutes on deck here. Oakland, El Paso will play four more games each after tonight, including the decision day showdown with each other. Monterey Bay has only three games left after tonight. We look further up the table and Oakland, El Paso, Colorado Springs are all still looking at maybe a home playoff game, all within touching distance of San Diego sitting on 46 points. So a lot that's left to be decided in the West. 21 days from now, it'll all be decided. It's gonna be a very bumpy, interesting 21 days. It could be a very bumpy, interesting 45 minutes as JC Griggs sets the watch. Oakland in black, left to right. Monterey Bay in white, right to left. We're underway in half number two. Happy to have you with us alongside MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Joe Malfa. Hugh Roberts puts his hand up in apology, just conceding the corner. Yeah, the gates here in the second half.
Lilo Diaz, ready for the outswinger. Diaz, and Edda had it lined up the whole way. A low line drive, that's taken back by the Roots. Reed looking through for Pelize. Murphy. Maury Dolner on his horse. Looking ahead for Dixon. Flag comes up on Alex Dixon. But it's a very good run from Alex Dixon. He's looking for that first ball in from Maury Dolner. But as Maury Dolner just takes him off, doesn't have the ability just to get himself back on side and recycle his run. A bit of a warning sign to see how explosive Monterey Bay can be in transition moments. So if you're Noel Delgado in the Oakland and Roots, plus one defending when you're in possession, it's going to be really key for the remainder of the second half. Hackshop. Paul Blanchett. Oh, oh. Pelize driving ahead. Johnny Rodriguez. Trayvon Reed. One thing that seemingly hasn't changed in the second half is it's a head now to Rodriguez, but wide is the fact that Oakland is going to dominate control of the ball. Starts with one for Manuel Pelaez centrally, so John Rodriguez flicks onto that higher line. You talk about players that can whip in a ball from a dangerous area all over the field. That's something that the Oakland Roots have that weapon and luxury. Doesn't have the ability just to get it on target, John Rodriguez. Some space here for Walmart Martinez. Martinez continues to run a Coley. Not wrong footed. Baca. Slate, no yellow cards from that first half. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest product specials and more. Select. Player's choice. Mark Clementa. Johnny Rodriguez did not go for that ball. He pulled up and he's trying to flex out that left leg. That is not a good sign for a Roots team. Has already down Lindo Mafeka from a red card. Alex Dixon pushes this one all the way out over the line for a goal kick. They do have Jesse Osadeno if need be, if Rodriguez can't go. He like for like in that position. Rodriguez has really come into his own this year. Previous two seasons, 44 appearances, only 13 starts, only four goals this year. 26 games, 17 starts, 11 goals. Breakout year for number 17. They needed somebody to step up, fill the void left behind by Otar Carlson. Rodriguez has gotten close to that goal scoring output. Maybe not the same type of player. A focal point atop the line. Well, to be fair, a lot of Carlson's goals were free kicks and penalties. Rodriguez just about exclusively from the run of play.
keeping the ball with ease here. Oakland, Barbier, Reed. Here's Graciano, some space, takes a strike, it's deflected off of Pelize, and it'll be a goal kick. But it's better from the Oakland Roots. What you expect, just getting on the ball, off the ball movement in those half spaces. Just so much fluidity, because whether it's Danny Barbier playing high and wide, and Modias come centrally just to create an overload, and that gives Graciano a step higher. Donor lets it run by into space. Over everybody, he blasts it. You need to have a bit more numbers if you're Monterey Bay. Good little move from Maury Donor just to let the ball run by. It's only Sam Gleedle essentially inside your 18 yard box. Your Ugo Coley or Alex Dixon. You have to have the willingness just to create overloads. Get yourself in a goal scoring opportunity. To the deflection. Rodriguez look for Tamakas. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of the USL Championship on ESPN Plus, home of the USL La Liga, Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Masoso driving through. Will tug from behind. You see Griggs let it go. So too did Masoso the ball. Back up to Monterey Bay. Put the head. Back by Hugh Roberts. Baca over the top. Flag looks like it'll stay down here as Gleedle comes through. There's a look over from that Oakland back line to see if it pop up, but timed it well, Gleedle. Just couldn't handle it in the end. Memo Diaz. Trayvon Reed always likes to cut it in and shoot. Masoso Rodriguez lifts it along. And Herrera has it. You mentioned it earlier, but how many times in previous games was that Sedano getting on the ball? And it was Johnny Rodriguez off the ball running and I do think if you're Nil Delgado you're asking Johnny Rodriguez just to be a bit more of a creator yes he can do it we talked about his goal scoring this season 11 goals on the season you want him to be on the receiving end of things so I do think it's going to be very interesting and I'm curious to see Nil Delgado he goes into his bench he dips into his bench and who he brings off Rodriguez off the hustle by Masoso lost it Struggling to play out of their own end, though, right now, Monterey Bay. Struggling to see any of the ball, period. 65% possession still lying with the Oakland Roots. And it's been a very good start to the second half for the Oakland Roots. Pressing high, forcing turnovers, frustrating the opposition, not allowing them any sort of success to get in any rhythm. Great ball. Tamakas. Does curl in for him. Tamakas turns a corner. Tamakas centers. Palais, it pops up, hits him in the hand. Trayvon Reed tried to call him off, and Palais now apologizing to the Jamaican left winger. Has to be so difficult as a striker like Palais to let that ball go through. Link of play from Johnny Rodriguez. That's where we've seen the progression just to bring players in and use his body. But this touch from Tamakas is so good around the corner. And then you have the composure to cut this ball back because watch the back line of Monterey Bay. They retreat. So the real site is right around that penalty mark. But if you're Trayvon Reed, you have to be barking at Tamakas, excuse me, at Elias to let this ball just roll through and you run onto it. Sloppy first touch hits him off in the hand.
Reed gets by. Still Trayvon Reed. Masoso. Tamaka saves it. Cecil Cedeno getting ready to come on now for the Roots. Over the top for Emra Clementa. That'd be something. Already have a goal tonight from Danny Barbier. Emra Clementa getting into an advanced position. And you alluded to it earlier, Ricky. The way that they release their center backs into the attack, even though they're in a three back with wing backs, it's a little risky, but it's paid off tonight with the goal from Barbier. I think you talk about the trust that Noel Delgado has in terms of their decision making, when to go, when to stay, but also the understanding for the players around him as the wing backs drop off on that back line, it allows Danny Barbier and Emma Clementa to join forward. And so many times when you see the Oakland Roots building out, it builds out with a two back, right? Because you play against a lone striker, so you create an overload. You over you overload on that front line. As we see the sub that I'm not surprised whatsoever. You bring it to Daniel for Trayvon Reed. So now by result, you're gonna see a lot more service into Pelias and John Rodriguez. John Rodriguez, he's gonna stay a bit higher. And you want this man, so Daniel, to get on the half spaces and really ask questions of Monterey Bay. Cedeno now locked and loaded, re-upped his deal for next year for the Roots. Traded mid-year. Eduardo Rito going to Hartford. Cedeno coming back this way. Substitution powered by East Bay Community Energy, providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more. Ramo Diaz. On this free kick. Looks like Johnny Rodriguez has shifted left with Cedeno coming right. Which are back at home on September 30th. That's next week against San Antonio. Limited single game tickets still available. Purchase yours now before they sell out. To secure yours, visit us at openroutssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-11. 4-4, and that is a San Antonio team that knocked the Roots out of the playoffs last year and beat Orange County 4-0 tonight. Should be a dandy next week. Tamakas. You can already see what Cedeno brings, that cheeky little flick up the line for Tamakas. Donor finds Gleedle in some space. Dixon showing for support. Alex Dixon wins a corner. You don't want to let complacency creep in if you're the Oka Roots seeing a lot of the ball. Because once you let your guard down, the front line for Monterey Bay, just so clinical and it's so explosive. Alex Dixon, Sam Guido, Nugo Coley can create something out of nothing. And set pieces are going to be a brilliant opportunity for Monterey Bay just to get that go-ahead goal because they're not creating through the run of play here. Outswinger delivered, never gets through to a Coley who is lurking. Lies drives it clear, nobody and a black jersey in the zip code. So it's sent back down by Herrera. One hour gone, a half hour remains. Still 1-1 between the Roots and Monterey Bay. For now, as Dixon wants to begin this attack again. He scored three minutes in. Danny Barbier tied at 44 minutes in. Martinez trickles through. Here's Dixon blocked by Masoso. Corey Doner on it. Beer clears. USL is celebrating Hispanic Latino Heritage Month with stories, events, and more. 
bringing to life this special celebration across the league. Go to uslsoccer.com slash hispanic-heritage to learn more. Whistle goes against Monterey Bay. Celebrate your next event with the Oakland Roots. Groups of 10 or more can take advantage of specially priced tickets and enjoy memorable experiences, including player meet and greets, the parade of champions, playing on the field at halftime, and more. To reserve your group experience, contact us at tickets at rootssc.com or call 510-488-1144. Away for Oakland. Shaw went down awkwardly. Same thing that we saw in the earlier portion. Two players just going at it between the two. Hackshaw just trying to force the issue of J.C. Griggs and try to catch McCauley in trouble. A lot in there, makes the most of it. Exactly what I'm talking about. You build out in a line of two, you drop in Donaciano, so that lets Danny Barbier on that far side press higher. And then Emmer Clemente have the license to roam freedom, but as they step up, the weak-sided center midfielder needs to provide that secondary pivot next to Neville Hackshaw. And then you have Ryan Tamakas, so Daniel never playing on the same plane. And what, I, what I mean by that is you'll see Tamakas, he'll be wide. So Daniel played central and vice versa. Always causing confusion and asking questions of opposition. Another twist in the tail. Phoenix equalizer against El Paso. This one nodded back toward Anetta, almost left short with Palais closing in. So with that goal by Phoenix, El Paso goes back below the playoff line. They're one to one. Monterey Bay one point better than El Paso, but El Paso does have a game in hand. Oakland back up into seventh. It was Doric Formella who scored the goal for Phoenix, by the way, helping out his former team in the Oakland Roots. Coming through now, Ugo Akoli! That won't help the Roots. Akoli puts Monterey Bay ahead. Against the runner play, but Ugo Coley, he just gives you that presence on the top line. And sometimes you just want it that little bit more between him, the Ville Hackshaw, and Emmer Clemento. Who was going to rise above the challenge? Who's going to get on the end of it? Great first touch to create that little bit of separation and just wrong foots. Paul Blanchett. You pay your striker to produce that little bit of indiv individual brilliance. On the back end of things, Frank Yap loving it. They get their lead here on the road in the second half. Third goal of the season for Ugo Akoli, and they've all come in the last five games. A man in form at the right time, that's a nasty challenge. Yellow and maybe lucky for it to only be so. Pomasoso over to help up Akoli, but this Looked like it could have been worse. So loose touch, and I'll tell you what. motion, ooh. Not doing him any favors in that replay. But it's a swooping leg, and the motion that catches Ugo Coley. Been a bit of a hole, a lot worse. For not for what's also, and like you said, Joe, I think he's very lucky to only see yellow there. Some fouls, you have that millisecond in between where you're just wondering which pocket the referee's gonna reach for. That was certainly one of those. Phoenix, El Paso, 
did just go final at one to one. And with Monterey Bay retaking the lead, it changes the situation so that it's Monterey Bay in seventh on 43 points. Oakland in eighth on 40. El Paso in ninth on 40. We had this situation earlier in the night when it was still nil-nil El Paso Phoenix and one-nil Monterey Bay. This scenario presents itself again just with different score lines. Rodriguez. Both of Monterey Bay's goals just came the same way. Counter through the middle for Acoli, where he played it off that time to Gledel. Then Dixon will work on the counter. This one, he goes ahead, he takes it himself, he scores it himself. That's been a big week for the Oakland Roots in terms of the opening of their ownership and the funds they were able to raise, well over $2 million. Now you can become a part owner of The Roots and Soul by heading to wefunder.com slash Oakland. Fans 18 and up can join the ownership group for as little as $100 today. Team. Probably a fifth win in six. They had that four game winning streak. Lost to San Diego. Trying to get right back on track here. A couple of teams have done that this year in the West where it seemed like they were left for dead or Sinking to the bottom, and all of a sudden, go on a run like this, like Monterey Bay, and you're back into it. Phoenix is one that comes to mind. They were down around 10th, 11th. Now they're right up against that line. Maybe have a home playoff game. Obviously, Orange County sticks out. They had the coaching change. They were down in the 11th. Now they, coming into tonight, had a chance to challenge for second, but San Antonio sort of closed the door on that a little bit with their win over Orange County head to head tonight. A couple of teams do it. Monterey Bay, the latest. So did it earlier in the year. Not getting hot at the right time. Rattling off those wins. So Monterey Bay is doing right now. And we're looking for some insurance here. Dixon almost snuck in behind Hackshaw. And once again, it's the same pattern of play for Monterey Bay. You play in quickly to your front line, and it's off the ball movement. Whether it is from Alex Dixon, Sam Gleadle, or Sean O'Coley making those runs across the back line of the Oak and Roots. So I do think if you're Noel Delgado, you're looking at that back line and having and asking them to have a bit more communication for Donaciano or Napa Matoso just to be that plus one the numerical advantage in your defensive structure because too many times 1v1 you're getting beat. seen enough as a Daniel since he's came on as well. Do you think there is going to be success to be had with him off of the shoulder of Baca? Playing to that single pivot, the weak side is always going to be on for the Oakland Roots. Make him chase and make him jump out of position to open up a gap in front of this back line in Monterey Bay. Denaciano. Tamakas. So just the one change made by Oakland. Cedeno came on for Reed. No subs made yet by Monterey Bay. Cedeno gets it back from Palais. And it's a corner coming for the Roots. Corners up to you by East Bay Community Energy, providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more.
Diaz, his service falls centrally nicely for Oakland. Seems like a couple of guys had chances at it before it was led away by Monterey Bay. Oh, foul called against the Roots. As it stands, both of these teams are on the good side of the playoff line. Though El Paso is lurking just beneath them in ninth place. It's going to be a tight sprint to the finish. Three weeks from decision day. A couple of times he's had some trouble with the ball in the second half. Conceded the easy corner, gave away a throw in. Now his dribble here put him into some trouble, but we'll win it back. Throw as it comes off of Tabacas. You don't think that nutmeg was on purpose? <laughs> Let him tell you it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can assure you it wasn't. I think of a different term for an accidental nutmeg. Paprika, let's go to the spice cabinet, <laughs> pick something else out. <laughs> down. Trainers being waved on. Caught in the face. Okay. Okay. Holy the difference maker right now. Goal came 10 minutes ago in the 64th. Here we are in the 74th. The start of the year, all three coming in the last five games. Start looking at teams who you don't necessarily want to play come playoff time. This Monterey Bay team is one that you can start circling that fits that bill. If Coley is rounding into form, they've been playing strong defensively. Frank Yallop has been there, done that in the MLS. U.S. Open Cup, made runs in knockout tournaments, lifted trophies. Tracks that one out of its orbit. Tamakas keeps it in. Cedeno. Pass Baca. Cedeno. Nowhere to go with it. Now floats it. Rodriguez. Clash of the heads there. As he went up for it with Kai Green. And it's cleared. Neil Hackshaw. A heavy touch. Still powers through with it. Barbier. Hackshaw. Clemente letting it fly. Don't forget this Oakland team. Because of CONCACAF Nations League in the early portion of October, there's a chance their final game or two, they could be without Tabacas Hackshaw in the 11. So more of a reason to try and secure these points before the final two games, set themselves up for that postseason berth and not leave it to the last day. Jai will take the spot of Napo Masoso. Maybe something in the air tonight. Eric Formella scored the goal for Phoenix to tie it 1-1. He was the other part of the swap that saw Jai come this way to Oakland. And he can help find the equalizer for the roots that they so desperately need with 15 to play. danger of losing a fifth straight and really all of them have been nail biters that have just not gone the roots way it's letting their guard down at the wrong moment a couple of one goal games had the 3-1 loss to vegas but arguably at times a better team on the night all asleep at the wheel well times too many in that one start with a loss to louisville Good games against Sacramento. And the game against Vegas. And the last one against Tulsa 1-0, and now this one 2-1. Oh, 
was after they were coming off a stretch of eight games in which they won five, drew two, and lost only one. Never know when it might just go away at a moment's notice. Nothing from their form seemed to indicate that a five-game losing streak might be on the horizon. In the same way, nothing from Monterey Bay's form indicated that a stretch of five wins and six might be on the horizon. And here we are. You never know. So much parity in this league, how quickly things can change. Jai. Move for Tamakas. Ryan Tamakas wins the corner. Football 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. Free to play. Download now. on target for Oakland. That has been a theme this year. Well, they generate a lot of shots, 11 tonight. They aren't as efficient as they maybe should be in terms of getting those on frame and testing the opposing keeper. Have to get creative in how they've manufactured goals this year. Set pieces have come in handy. Now it's Diaz. This one won't come in so handy. So Daniel tries one, why not? Skips right in front of Veneta. And he smothers it. Some of the goals we've seen around the league tonight. I don't even think that would have been top five had he connected. <laughs> a little glimpse of the technical ability from Cedeno. As the ball pops up in the air, you just see the oncoming traffic. You let it down, you let it come down at the right time. You swing upwards. Straight at Herrera. Easy save for the goalkeeper in Monterey Bay. And watch out once again. Ganassiano, a wise foul. After Tamacas. Went down. This is the first change to the match now from Monterey Bay. That'll be all for Sam Gledel, who had the assist on the opening goal of the game. Chase Blue will take a spot. Just see that foul here from Donaciano. He needs to make this challenge in because an oncoming Mori Donor on the weak side. I thought he was terrific. Sam Guido working extremely hard on both sides of the ball, always asking questions, always playing vertically. You just see the competitiveness. Does not want to come off the field, but this man, Chase Boone, hindered with in injuries. A lot of 2023, you get him coming into form right around the playoffs. He can be a massive X factor for Monterey Bay. Only one goal, four assists on the season. Here's Boone, his first touches. Just out of the match. Nice cross block, Rodriguez clears. Five hundred forty-two total passes to three hundred twenty-three. In favor of the Roots, nearly sixty-five percent of the possession going their way done as much with it as you'd hope at the attacking end. So disciplined, the guidance of Frank Yellow defensively. No 
Oakland managed to come back once already and down one nil. Tamakas, volleys it across, blocked. Frank Yallop, you're having flashbacks against San Diego. It was in a very similar situation. 2-1 up late in the second half. But how do you see out a game now? How do you learn from those moments? Or do you think that's going to be the talking point for Frank Yallop from the sideline? Box defending, top of the list. You need to execute that extremely well because you know the Oakland Roots are going to come and put everything forward. A lot of men and a lot of numbers what balls into dangerous areas. So how good can you be winning your individual battles the remainder of this game for Monterey Bay? Back shot for Barbier. One thing you know is down a goal. Oakland is going to start committing these center backs forward more, whether it's Clementa or Barbier, who already has a goal tonight. Seattle fought through over the top. Now for Rodriguez. Goal kick. Neville Hatcher just gives you the luxury as a center back to step into that middle third and break lines with his passing. A bit too much weight on this ball. John Rodriguez, good effort. Unable to get on the end of it. Cedeno. Danny Barbier. Babu Jai. For Johnny Rodriguez, always a threat to turn and hit, never afraid from distance, Johnny Rodriguez, but now it's circulated to Tamakas. And another corner coming Oakland's way in the second half alone. This is gonna be corner number four for the Roots. Take it quickly. Diaz, Donaciano, Babacar Jai. Too much traffic to try to force that one through on the ground. And now look at this break the other way, led by Chase Boone. Waiting for some support. Dixon arriving late. Boone. Acoli, 1v1 with Clementa. Acoli waited too long. Moment was gone. Too early to be taking it to the corner. A moment squandered. What's he doing? Hugo Coley, you want him to just to have a bit of confidence. 85th minute, you have a defender inside its own 18-yard box. You go at him, you put him on his heels, and you make him make a decision. Has to be a frustrating moment for Frank Gallup because you get that third goal. You put the nail in the coffin here. You take all three points back to Monterey Bay. Big moment miss from Hugo Coley. Changes on the way now for the Roots. It'll be all four. Donaciano replaced by Tarek Murad. And it looks like Saldana would take the spot of Damakas. Saldana, Project 510 products. See the action now a couple of times this year. Peter 
spot, though, this time for Saldana. Last time he came on for a brief two-minute cameo. He's been on the bench a few times now. He can maybe help things out here in a vital game. Nowhere near a must-win yet for Oakland, but getting close, he flicks this one on. Starting to get to that territory now where every single point matters that much more. Seemed like they were on their way to at least one the way the flow of the game was going, and maybe three. All the momentum was going their way, especially after they equalized late in the first half. Instead, Ugo Coley strikes. Monterey Bay maybe on the brink of taking all three on the road. The Roots have a lot of the ball, that's for sure, but I do think just creating those clear-cut opportunities have not come as often as it did earlier in the season. We haven't seen the combination play. We haven't seen players just expressing themselves in that final third as we see the lies go down. I do think that's going to be the question mark and that has to be answered for Noel Delgado in the remaining games in the regular season. Don't answer those questions in the remaining games of the regular season. There might not be a postseason if they're on the verge of a fifth straight loss here. It's going to be an interesting mental test, though, for Monterey Bay. We're only a few days removed from Wednesday where they were leading 2 to 1. And then Xavi Nolati, the Academy product of San Diego, scored 90 and 90 plus 3. Two goals last few minutes to blow a 2 1 lead. We're in that territory just about here. Cedeno. Imagine if it's Saldana, by the way, as well. <laughs> Academy product of the Roots coming on just his second appearance after what Nalati did the other night. You can just feel the pain when I asked Frankie Alp about the game. He was like, look, I just, I'm not even over it. It was just such a weird game. Because to be expected, San Diego were the better side in terms of their football, but we executed better in both boxes. Just two mental lapses, lack of back post defending. Just feel the hurt in his voice and his tone when he was talking about it. But I do think it's a big learning opportunity now just to show Frank Yellow the messages, the lessons that they learned in that San Diego game. Like I mentioned earlier, how do you see out the game? How do you manage those critical moments in your own 18-yard box? Because when once playoff comes for both of these sides, the game in the margin of error is just so thin. It all comes down to decision making can execute who can be clean and make that little bit of a difference. So big chance for the remaining match for the Oakland Roots just to call himself back into this game and show a bit of character and grit. And also Monterey Bay to see a game out. Jai puts the shoulder down, looking end line. Throw for the Roots here in the 90th minute. Launch this one, gets a running start from on the track. And launch it, he does. Top of the six, almost fell for Moran. Hackshaw off the post and in! Nabil Hackshaw! Wow, what a moment! We're level! Just disbelief. The good things happen when you whip the ball into a dangerous area. Moments ago, talking about Neville Hackshaw. He just has a luxury to give you the ability to break lines with his passing, but also gives you the ability to create something out of nothing. So instinctual. Looking like a number nine, the overhead kick. Not even a courtesy dive from Herrera. Disbelief. All throughout the Monterey Bay players, but take a bow. Neville Hackshaw, big time goal to tie this thing up. Two goals from two center backs tonight for the Oakland Roots. Unfortunately, that's probably not even a top three or four goal <laughs> of the night from around the league as it pertains to goal of the week voting. The one to remember though for Neville Hackshaw is first in an Oakland Roots jersey. And it's here we go again for Monterey Bay. They're conceding 
90 and 90 plus three against San Diego, blowing a 2-1 lead on Wednesday. They concede again in the 90th tonight. Just off the heels when I'm talking about Frank Yallop, learning moment. Box defending, or lack thereof. That's how it actually knows. That's the willingness, the extra bit of effort to see out a game and to win your individual battle. It doesn't feel like this game is over yet. It feels like 2-2 <laughs> is a long shot at this point with the night we've seen so far. But this result does hold. What this does to the standings is it nothing, absolutely nothing actually, because <laughs> El Paso drew earlier. These two teams would split a point here. So it started Oakland 7, Monterey Bay 8, El Paso 9. They did the same thing. difference is that there's one fewer game remaining for all of those teams now than when we began tonight. But the margins and the places would be the same. Three minutes have just about come and gone. Is there anything additional though after the goal scored by Hackshaw? Took some time off of stoppage time. J.C. Griggs now. Three minutes have come and gone. And there's the final whistle. A thriller in the Battle of the Bay between the Oakland Roots and Monterey Bay FC. For the first time, these two local rivals actually draw. Monterey Bay won the first encounter. Oakland the next two. They split a point each tonight in dramatic fashion. Down to the wire here in the playoff race. Here's how it looks. Both teams still on the good side of the playoff line, but El Paso is right below Monterey Bay, one point back with a game in hand. Three weeks left. This will change a lot, and we are in for a treat at the finish here, Ricky. Just incredible. Incredible how tight the table is, Exhibit A, but also just about the ability in, the, in between both of these sides. Milton Roots, a lot of the ball. The Monterey Bay game plan almost executed to perfection once again. Mental laps, not good enough in terms of box defending. You let two points slip out of your fingers, but the Okaroos show a bit of character and a bit of fight until minute 93. And they get a well-deserved draw here. Monterey Bay is going to feel like they should have had six points from the last few days. Instead, they have one, and they'll have to bounce back somehow with only three games remaining. We all need a moment. We'll come back in just a moment to wrap things up for a Pioneer Stadium. It finishes Oakland 2, Monterey Bay 2. Little things can make a big difference. To have families access much needed resources, Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up to deliver 2,300 diapers to the East Oakland Collective. By supporting parents and babies, we can improve the health of our communities. Here's to a brighter future and many more random acts of kindness. Learn more at oaklyrootssc.com slash anthem. finish here at Cal State University East Bay at Pioneer Stadium. Nabil Hackshaw, his first goal as a member of the Oakland Roots comes in terrific and dramatic fashion. We'll take you to the highlights now of the 2-2 drop between these two local rivals. It started very early and ended very late. First goal, minute three. Last goal, minute 90. It was Alex Dixon in minute three. And you'll see Monterey Bay scoring two goals in very similar fashion. You play direct into your number nine and have the off-the-ball runnings. This time it's Sam Bledel 
understand the end by draw and Emmerich Clements. Alex Dixon is on the weak side. Terrific start for Monterey Bay as they get the opening goal, but the Oka Roots, you know something about them. They're never gonna give up. They're gonna fight till that final whistle. The fluidity, the freedom, especially for the center back to step up into that final third. Danny Barbier gets himself wrong side of Mori Donor. Terrific goal right before halftime. And from there, it seemed like Oakland actually might put in another or two more and sort of run away with it. But Hugo Akoli, just completely against the run of play, does this. And just bullies the field. Hackshaw and Emmer Clemenza shrugs off both defenders. It's this touch right here that creates that little bit of separation. That one that makes Emmer Clemenza make that little bit of extra effort. But clinical finish from Akoli. Nothing that Paul Blanchett can do. And then this is just terrific from the go Hackshaw. Just so instinctual. Pull something out of a hat. Don't even think. Let me just put a leg at an overhead kick. Speechless. Not even a courtesy dive. <laughs> exactly what we're talking about. Not even a courtesy dive from Herrera. I mean, it's not even a classic bike. It, it, it's the outside of his wrong foot there as he's trying to plant. I don't know. It's a goal. All that matters is it's a goal. <laughs> he didn't think it was going in, probably. It did go in. A look at the final stats. But for Monterey Bay, it's heartbreak. Back to back games, a few days apart. That again should have been six points. I mean, how you look at Wednesday, you look at tonight for Monterey Bay in the lead, getting into that 90th minute. And you let that slip right between your fingers. And they're very similar. Box defending or lack thereof for Frank Yelp, so I don't want to be in the locker room if I'm a Monterey Bay player. But for Yelka Roots, I think if your notes are got the positive to take from this, like you didn't play your best football, but you found a way to grind out a result as players are right around the corner. Doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to be effective. Big point at home for Oakland Roots. Both of these teams will have the midweek off. Oakland will host San Antonio next Saturday, and Monterey Bay will visit San Diego next Saturday. I'll look again at some scores from around the league tonight brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town, explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. A couple of really big results tonight in this Western Conference playoff race. New Mexico losing, Colorado Springs winning, and El Paso and Phoenix splitting a point. And San Antonio taking down Orange County in style. That's a statement from Alan Marcina. But again, I do think if you go back to our game, Monterey Bay, no commutes. I think a draw a piece is probably fair, but what's the reaction look like for both of these sides? Frank Yallop and Del Delgado have a very big week ahead of them. Draw fair, but the way it happened, <laughs> Oakland's gonna feel like it won. Monterey Bay is gonna feel like it lost. That'll do it for us tonight from Pioneer Stadium. For the crew that makes this possible and my broadcast partner, Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malva saying good night from Hayward. Happy fall, everybody. We are three weeks away from the end of the regular season. It'll be a dramatic finish as it was tonight with Oakland and Monterey Bay tying at two. Good night, everybody, and come back tomorrow for more action in USL Championship. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.